Welcome to the Cody Felger Podcast, a podcast dedicated to talking Colts football. Here is your host, Cody Felger. On with you now, Andrew Thomason of iSportsWeb.com. Andrew, how you doing today, man? I'm doing well, and yourself? I'm doing good. Can't complain, man. Uh, the draft's coming upon us uh, very, very quickly, a uh, couple weeks. And so, Andrew, I know you've written a little bit of content and you've looked at this draft a lot. Uh, I'm curious, in the first round, the Colts, uh, near the end of the, the first round, uh, they, they've been mocked a lot of different positions. Um, what, do you, what position do you think the Colts should address uh, in the draft coming up in a couple weeks? Uh, that's a good question. I've actually written three different mock drafts myself, and I sort of mixed it up uh, each time. Um, quite frankly, I've been seeing a lot of different um, positions that could potentially be selected there. Um, I would really um, say to someone to keep your eye on is Jonathan Abram, uh, safety out of Mississippi State, um, with re-signing of Clayton Gathers for one year. That's sort of real similar to what Chris Ballard did last season or a season before with Jack Muhort, uh, which was kind of a one-year prove-it deal. Um, and Clayton's a very good player, and if he can manage to stay healthy, then I think um, they could work something out long-term. But I think Jonathan Abram, uh, again, out of Mississippi State, would be a very good um, sort of, I guess, you could call it an insurance policy or a security blanket uh, in case um, Gathers is um, no longer with us uh, in the following season. So as we already know, last week the Colts claimed former Cleveland Browns safety Derek Kendrick off of waivers. So Andrew, in your mind, that doesn't affect your decision on drafting the safety that early like Abrams in the first round? No, no. I think Ken, uh, Kendrick is a very good yuck safety. Um, but I, like I said, I've seen from a lot of the Indy Star guys, whether it's Zach Kiefer, whether it's um, you know Mike Chappell of, I believe, Fox 59, whether it's Stephen Holder of The Athletic, I, I've seen a lot of um, different references that point towards uh, potentially selecting Jonathan Abram. And to be quite honest with you, Cody, I wouldn't be surprised if we select a wide receiver um, in the first round either. I know um, we selected, or excuse me, we signed Devin Funches in the offseason. Um, and I know both Frank Reich and Chris Ballard are very high on him uh, because of his young age and uh, what they consider to be elite route running skills uh, for somebody of his physical stature at 6'4". But I think somebody, uh, if DK Metcalf is there with the kind of performance he had um, at the combine, I would not be surprised if Chris Ballard, um, you know, selected him there as well. Hmm. Interesting. I, I guess I'm curious because, you know, looking at the, the drafts Ballard's been a part of, it doesn't really seem like, you know, he, I think he's taken one one draft pick in however many years he's been in the league. I um, mean, that was Alshon Jeffrey. And I think the Colts kind of view, uh, I don't know if Reich or Ballard said it, but they kind of view Funches as sort of like the Alshon Jeffrey type player. And I've heard, you know, this draft, I'm not a draft expert by any means, but I've kind of heard how deep this draft is on receivers. So do you think that that would impact possibly Ballard and company's thinking on maybe taking a receiver so early where you can get more value, you know, with how deep the position is? Uh, not at all. I really think the last several years we've seen Ballard's uh, mentality. He's willing to address the need, um, but he's also willing to take the best player available. A uh, prime example um, was last year with the Quentin Nelson selection at number six. Um, that, you know, fortunately for us, that's drafted, or excuse me, that uh, that selection there was a, a major need. Um, so we sort of got the best of both worlds there. But like I said, if, if DK Metcalf is there or, um, you know, any other receiver, whether it's Paris Campbell out of Ohio State or, you know, I think I think Ballard will will take the best player available. Okay, so I want to give you something. I want to play a little bit of game with you here. So uh, so we're going to have three numbers here, okay? One, two, three. And I want you, Andrew, to tell me, what are your top three needs for the Colts heading into the 2019 draft? Okay, let's see. Number one, I would definitely say a defensive lineman or an outside edge rusher of some sort. I think we saw with the game in Kansas City, um, we – we just could not match simply what, what Kansas City had with Justin Houston and D Ford and Chris Jones. And of course, D Ford now in San Francisco and Justin Houston. My apologies there. Justin Houston now with us. Um, I think he, he's going to bring a good veteran presence uh, to the locker room. And, and if he can sort of stay away from the uh, injury bug, we can, we might have something very special, but um, 
anyways, back to your question. One, being pass rusher, first and foremost. Two, uh, being receiver. And three, this might surprise a lot of people, but I think corner um, would be a number three need. I liked Pierre Desir. We signed him to a three-year deal in the offseason. Um, and I like Kenny Moore. Um, I'm not really sure about Quincy Wilson. I think he played very well this past season, but I think he still has a lot of room, um, you know, a lot of area to improve and uh, room for growth. And so I would not be surprised um, if in one of the earlier rounds with one of our two second round picks, if Chris Ballard, you know, uh, selects a corner. Hmm. Interesting. And, I, and also uh, Jalen Collins is a guy that they, I know they brought in kind of mid season, uh, who could potentially, you know, former second round pick. He has some some talent there. So uh, definitely one thing we, you know, you talked about earlier is like Ballard is not afraid to bring in players for competition. I mean, we've seen it everywhere at every position. Ballard's not afraid to bring in players for competition. Um, so yeah, I definitely would not be surprised if he brought it in the corner. I know a lot of people would be shocked. I think another position, Andrew, that you know, some I, I noticed some Colts fans are very split on uh, is the tight end position, and I think. I think that the Colts, in my personal opinion, uh, wouldn't be idiots for looking at potentially adding another tight end in you know the in the draft at some point. Whether that's you know I don't know if I do it first round, but you know whether that's a second or third round pick, just just because of the uncertainty at the tight end position, as even as deep as it is. Yeah, no, I I definitely agree with many Colts fans, and and like I said, um, you know. I wouldn't be surprised either if, if we if there was a tight end selected, maybe in the third or fourth round. Um, somebody you know that goes in the first round, such as a TJ Hawkinson out of Iowa or a Noah Fant out of Iowa. I don't think either one of them are going to be there uh, by the time we get to uh, our number twenty six pick. And even if they were, I don't see. I just don't see Chris Ballard um, selecting a, a tight end that early, especially with the with the play of Eric Ebron last year. I mean, he really came on as an elite tight end. And Jack Doyle, excuse me, um, although he battled the injury bug, he played very, very well. Um, he sort of filled that what Frank Reich used to have in Zach Ertz, that sort of role in the run-pass option uh, game from last season. And so, um, and Mo Alley cox I think a lot of people forget that he was he's a very, very solid uh, run blocker. Um, he was in on a lot of our different running schemes. And uh, I think we're very, very solid at the tight end position. But um, I guess I'll just go back to what I said earlier about selecting the best player available. Um, and if Chris Ballard believes that to be a tight end and he feels that that uh, player would be good for our team and our locker room um, and our scheme, then I think he'll, uh, he'll pull the trigger. Right. And I think another guy uh, talking about kind of forgetting people, Ross Travis was a guy that the Colts signed to the end of 2017 who kind of showed some flashes, I think, in training camp before he got injured. I mean, he's 6'6", 225. I mean, he's only 26 years old. So that's definitely another guy. But, yeah, there's definitely a lot of unknowns outside of – I mean, Ebron even got – I think he got a he got a procedure done uh, a couple weeks ago. He tweeted or something like that. Um, so kind of the tight end group's a little bit banged up, honestly. And that, I think that's kind of the reasoning behind that, you know, people thinking the Colts might select a tight end at some point during the draft. Yeah, yeah, and I, I, like I said, it wouldn't surprise me at all, but I, I think um, that our medical department, um, I think, um, excuse me, I lost my train of thought, I apologize. <laughs> You're good. So the medical department, I think, last year, um, I, I think they took an unnecessary um, hit, I suppose. I think people were too too harsh on them, especially after all the injuries that we, we battled as a team um, during the first several months of the season. But um, I think as this season comes along or um, gets, gets going here in a few months, I think that we'll see um, major improvements in terms of um, that particular area. And I think that um, guys will you know, be healthier, Jack Doyle, Eric Ebron with the different procedures that they've had. You know, of course, that'll take time, but but I, I totally agree with you. I think our tight end group is very, very solid, um, and it's just guys like Ross Travis. You know, these guys, Chris Ballard said it over and over again, these kinds of guys take time to develop. At 20, you know, 26 years old, uh, Ebron just turning 26, I don't think, uh, I think just yesterday, actually. Mm -hmm. um, oh, actually, today's his birthday. Happy birthday, Eric Ebron. Oh, is it? Is it? Yes, happy birthday, absolutely. My apologies, Eric. Um, but I think, I think, think we're, we'll be just fine at the tight end position. Yeah, definitely. One last question for you. Do you think this is the year the Colts should look at finding an offensive tackle of the future? I mean, obviously this is Costanzo's 
uh, last year of his contract. Should they look at getting an offensive tackle potentially this year, or should they wait it out for next year? Uh, that's an interesting question, actually. <clears throat> Excuse me. I was reading uh, and also listening to one of Chris Ballard's um, press conferences from the other day, and he was actually – Oh, I'm sorry, it was actually a podcast, and it was the uh, podcast that Adam Schefter holds. And mm. one of the things he mentioned was he was really surprised at how deep, in terms of depth, this year's offensive line class is for the draft. And so I think when you look at Costanzo's age, and you look at this being the last year of his contract, and you look at Chris Ballard has mentioned um, the depth with the offensive linemen in this year's draft, it would not surprise me in the least bit um, to see – uh, him select a, a potential successor to Costanzo. Uh, personally, I think um, he is one of the better left tackles in the game. I think he's an elite run blocker. I think he struggles sometimes in pass protection, uh, particularly, particularly, excuse me, against the bull rush um, players like you know Jadavian Clowney, JJ Watt, what have you. But um, I think honestly, if he performs like he did this past season, um, I think he'll be worthy of a two or three year extension. I think somebody with this caliber, I think, you you know, waiting out until the very end, I suppose, um, until you feel it's best to move on might be best uh, for the Colts. Yeah, absolutely. Andrew, what are you working on now, man? Maybe people can look at and read and whatever you're working on. And the draft's coming up very quickly. So you probably got some pieces uh, in, you know, kind of coming up. Well, actually, it's funny you say that. I, uh, I, was in the process of working on several pieces and then I received an email, um, a, a team wide email, I should say. Um, and the company that I'm working for iSportsWeb, as you mentioned, uh, they are actually closing down in about a month or shutting down the oh, website. Man. And so I'm, I'm actually in the process of looking for another writing job. Okay. Um, so that's sort of where I'm at. Um, but I def- I'll definitely have some more pieces, um, upcoming here soon in the oncoming weeks. Um, it's finals time, you know, I'm a IUPUI college student, so it's, hmm. it's crunch time and I've tried to balance, you know, collegiate and, and outside work. And so, but, but yes, I'll definitely have some pieces coming up here soon. Dude, that's gotta be nice. What are you studying at IUPUI? Uh, sports journalism. Okay. <laughs> that's exciting, man. Yeah. Yes. Dude, yeah. Years ago, man, I, I feel old now, but years ago I was looking at IUPUI and, I definitely was uh, drawn to the cheap Colts and Pacers tickets for sure, but kind of wanted to do something like that at one point in my life, and who knows, maybe someday I'll do that again. But, dude, that's really cool. Yeah, well, best of luck with that. Yeah, yeah, thank you very much. All right, man, take care.